two. The jab, let's talk about the jab. Jab's very versatile, right? A uh, couple of different uses, combat sports, uh, since we're here at Renegade Combat Sports, uh, home of combatives. Um, you're just gonna change the weapon. You're only gonna change what hits the opponent but, or the attacker. But at the end of the day, it's the movement of the arm and your body that we're trying to get to with the jab. Um, the reason it's so important, obviously, is you're gonna throw three times more lead hands than you will power punches, okay? That's what Emmanuel Stewart, former coach at Kronk Gym in Detroit always says, George Foreman says, everyone knows that you're gonna use your jab a lot. And you're gonna use your jab for a variety of different reasons. In the ring, you're gonna use it to close distance, you're gonna use it to range and keep somebody out. Uh, on the street, you're gonna use it as an entry. Okay, so again, there won't be as much movement potentially on the street because you'll be standing in someone's face. In the ring, obviously, we're gonna close our fists and corkscrew it over so that we're hitting with the first two knuckles to make sure that the power line is intact. On the street, you could be using your palm heel, you could be using your finger jab, you could be using a punch. Uh, you're just, like I said, you always attack with your body, okay? What you actually strike with is less important than you using your whole body, okay? So we're gonna have a couple of things, that we're gonna do a couple of these sessions on the jab because one just won't capture it all. George Foreman always said, if you don't have a jab, you can't fight. It's that important, all right? So to set up, we're gonna be in a normally athletic stance, Feet shoulder width apart, shoulder width back, foot slightly canted to the outside, knee slightly bent. A generally athletic stance, nose over toes. Okay, your guard position, whatever you're doing or choose to do with your hands, it's your business. Obviously, elbows down, or you don't want to fly your elbows. You want to do anything stylized like this, but you may change depending on how long the fight's going on, what you're doing with your hands, so your opponent can't figure it out and figure out the vulnerability. So you may change from just kind of a normal guard to a kind of a more Muay Thai guard, to a long guard, it depends. Depends on the situation. You just have to be experimental with it and figure out what's best for you. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is covering the distance. In boxing, you're always gonna marry your feet with your hands. It's like they're wired together. Just like I'm a puppet, I'm gonna move this hand, I'm gonna move this foot. I'm gonna move this hand, I'm gonna move this foot. All right, that's what keeps the uh, body weight striking intact. So what we wanna do is make sure that we park our deltoid right into our cheek. You don't wanna jab and keep your hand low like this because obviously if I miss, or if the guy slips or has movement or technique, that he just comes over the top of my jab and hits me. So I wanna protect myself as I attack, which is our combative principle, uh, principle of simulta uh, simultaneity. All right, so basically standing here, when you first start doing this, you want to stand so that you can touch the bag. And we're not throwing power shots. All I want you to do is make sure that you're using your hips, you're using your feet correctly, all right, that they're doing the right thing, and that you're swiveling to make the strike happen. So if you look, when I punch, all I'm doing is screwing that punch out into the bag. And you can see my hip, right, slight lean in, and obviously my foot is going to pivot. Now, never row your jab. And what a bad habit that guys get into is they'll throw their jab, then drop it and bring it back. Okay, they'll throw their jab, drop it and bring it back. It's called rolling. You can see the motion, rolling. You wanna bring that jab straight back. You go straight out, come straight back, all right? Once you've kind of got the feel of that and you can just kind of throw and get the hips involved and get your, get your shoulder involved, okay? Then we're gonna step off the bag and we're gonna cover a little bit of space. So in very simple application, my hands are up, you can see I can't touch the bag. And all I'm gonna do is push off my rear foot and step towards the bag as I rotate my fist forward. And straight back, right? And straight back, right? Straight back. Looking at the fighter, straight back. Here and now, if you hear my breathing, every time I strike, I'm gonna breathe with a sharp exhalation of air. So I'm gonna breathe, that tightens my core and make sure that if I get a counter shot, I'm braced, okay? So make sure that you're breathing properly. If you hold your breath, a lot of people will hold their breath when they're getting ready to punch, and then after the punch, then they'll take a breath, you'll gas release. All right, so all we're gonna do is again, stay here outside, boom, and we're gonna step in. Now, what can you do combatively? Well, you can do the same thing, standing here, boom, stepping in with your fingers, boom, to the eyes. Boom. Or I can step in with my palm heel. Boom. Boom. Right? 
a little bit difficult with these gloves because I want to make sure that my palm heel, not my fingers, are hitting on that. All right. So again, that's your basic jab. You can see where my shoulder is. I'm tucking my chin. I'm clenching my jaw. Right, chin down, bite down, and throw down. Basic jab. All right. And all you're going to do is practice that. Boom. Movement. Now, it's easy to do anything in a in a microcosm. That's straightforward. I'm not moving my head offline. I haven't incorporated any movement. That's all I've got to, at the advanced levels be incorporated into what you're doing with your jab, okay? If my head stays exactly in one place every time I punch, it's easy for someone to figure out how to deal with that. So in the next session, we're gonna talk about the next level of movement, what we're doing with our head, and give you some other options.